The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. Friends, after all is said and done, the reason you or anybody else smokes a cigarette can be summed up in one word, enjoyment. And certainly the enjoyment you get depends entirely on the taste of a cigarette. Put it this way, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. Well, the fact of the matter is Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Here's why Lucky's taste better. First, they're made of fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Second, Lucky's are actually made better. Made round, firm, fully packed, to always draw freely and smoke evenly. Yes, fine tobacco in a better-made cigarette gives you better taste every single time. After all, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. You'll know that's true the minute you light up a Lucky. So next time you're shopping for cigarettes, get the carton with the red bullseye, Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman for 10 years truly done. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the star of our show, a man who for years has won the highest accolade of critics and public alike. Oh, Don, please. A man whose unique abilities have brought him to the pinnacle of success and whose... Oh, I can't read this stuff. (laughs) You'll read it and like it. (laughs) Now, go ahead. A man whose talent is exceeded only by his modesty. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I don't see why it should be so hard for you to say a few nice things about me. But I'm happy you managed to struggle through that introduction. Well, Jack, the only reason I did was because I was afraid you'd fire me. Don, I couldn't fire you. Why not? Because this happens to be National Save Your Fat Week. (laughs) That's why. Oh, come on now, Jack. There hasn't been a National Save Your Fat Week since 1944. Don, Edward R. Murrow can be topical. I have to be funny. Anyway, you know what today is, don't you? Yes, yes, I do. It was exactly 20 years ago today that I agreed to go on your show. Oh, gosh. Jack, have you and Don really been together that long? We sure have, Bob. And right from the start, it was a wonderful association. No arguments, no bickering, no lawyers. That's right, Bob. He just tattooed the contract on my stomach and let it go at that. (laughs) And every year, there's been room for new clauses. I don't... Come in. Uh, telegram for Jack Benny. <laughs> Over here, boy. Hey, it's from Dennis. Anything wrong? Let me read it. Dear Mr. Benny, I may be a little late for the show today as I have to get my shoes shined and my car washed. I'm also eloping to Niagara Falls. <laughs> Dennis, eloping to Niagara Falls? What a crazy kid. I didn't even know he had a girl. Out of a clear blue sky, Dennis elopes. Couldn't get married like everyone else with a ceremony and guests and a nice violin solo. (laughs) 
Oh, well, if Dennis... Uh, 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 pardon me, Mr. Benny. Oh, are you still here? Well, I hate to mention it, but when one delivers a telegram, it's customary for one to get a tip. Oh, oh, of course, yeah. Now, how much do you usually get? Well, uh, that's up to you. Uh, I wouldn't want to influence you in any way. Well, let's see. Uh, do you mind if I use your phone a minute? No, no, go ahead. Hey, hello, Martha. Uh, this is Hyman. Hey, how's Grandma? Oh, not any better, huh? Well, what can we do? We can't afford medicine for the baby either. <laughs> Mark, if we spend that money on medicine, we won't be able to buy any food. <laughs> huh? The landlord was over? What'd he say? <laughs> He's only gonna give us two more days. Huh? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to see what I can do, Martha. <laughs> Keep up your courage. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Control yourself. Control yourself. Here. Here, I've got a tip for you. Oh, gee, thanks, mister. I... Oh, no, no. What's the matter? For a lousy time, I just wasted a routine I could have used on Strike at Rich. <laughs> Look, that's all the change I have for a tip. Anyway, I'm doing a radio program now, so why don't you wait? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Dennis, what are you doing here? I thought you were eloping. Oh, that's all off. All off? What happened? Well, this morning I was about to propose to the girl, and I really saw her for the first time. <laughs> you mean... She's got long, stringy hair, beady eyes, bad complexion, a mean face, and she's as big as a horse. <laughs> Gee, she sounds like a mess. Yeah, boy, am I glad she turned me down. <laughs> She turned you down? Oh, I don't care. I'll marry her twin sister. Oh, fine. You should see her twin sister. She's got a figure like Marilyn Monroe, legs like Betty Grable, hair like Rita Hayworth, and a face like Ava Gardner. Dennis, if the other girl is so ugly, how could her twin sister be so beautiful? You and Ed Murrow can be technical. I have to be funny. <laughs> Sing your song, will you? Ci va sonari, chi si sona, un friscaletto, e come si sona, un friscaletto, un friscaletto, ti piti, ti piti, ta. E con bari, ci va sonari, chi si sona, un saxofona, ma come si sona, un saxofona, tu 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 tu, tu saxofon. Un friscaletto, ti piti, ti piti, ta. E con Mari, ci vuol sonare, chi si suona, un violino, ma come si suona, un violino. A zing, a zing, un violin, tu, 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 saxofon. Un friscaletto, ti piti, ti piti, ta. E con Mari, ci va a suonare chi si suona alla trombeta ma come si suona alla trombeta pa 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 la trombeta zing zing un violin tu 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 saxofon un friscaletto e ti piti ti piti ta e con mari ci va a suonare chi si suona alla trombona, ma come si suona alla trombona? A fum, a fum, alla trombona, pa, 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 la trombetta, zing, zing, un violin, tu, 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 saxofon, un friscaletto, ti piti, ti piti, ta. Ti piti, ti piti, ti piti, ti piti, ta. Very 
Very good, Dennis. That was wonderful. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to do our version of Universal International's classic of the gridiron, All American. Hey, isn't that the one where uh, Tony Curtis stars as a football hero? That's right. In fact, tonight, I'm playing his role. Oh, but Jack, Tony Curtis is so young. How can you even think of taking the part he played? Look, there's no sense in arguing because I'm going to play the Tony Curtis part and nobody can stop me. I can. Who are you? Tony Curtis. <laughs> well, Tony... Tony, Curtis, this is a surprise. Well, Jack, I was at the studio when I heard about you doing this sketch tonight, so I thought I'd get down here as fast as I could. Oh. Jack, you really don't intend to take the part I played in the picture, do you? Well, of course I do. Well, don't you think it's a little ridiculous? Well, what's... What's so ridiculous about it? Jack, the picture happens to be all American, not early American. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Tony, I don't understand your attitude at all. It so happens that the producer of your picture, Aaron Rosenberg, is a very good friend of mine. If you don't let me play the part, you'll have to go back to the studio and face him. I mean, how would you explain it to him? I mean, what would you tell him? Him drove me down here. <laughs> oh. Well, look, Tony... I'm going to play the part unless you have a strenuous objection. Well, I do. I think you're playing the part of a college boy is incongruous. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell... Hey, Bob. Bob, come here a minute, will you? Yes, Jack? What, uh, what does incongruous mean? Huh? Well, I'm not sure. Oh, Remley! Never mind! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Remley, a fine fellow to ask. His dictionary consists of Scotch, bourbon, <laughs> black and white, Hag and Hag. Now look, Tony. I'll tell you what incongruous means. It means inappropriate, unbecoming, not harmonious in character, inconsonant or inconsistent. Oh. Well, I still don't understand it. The meaning of incongruous? Oh, how one twin can be so beautiful and the other one so ugly. <laughs> Dennis, we're not talking about that. Well, I don't understand incongruous either. Look, Dennis, uh, explain it to him, Tony. All right, I'll make it simple, Dennis. Incongruous means something that doesn't fit. Certainly, you know, something that doesn't fit. Now, Tony, you just sit down in the studio and watch me play your part. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Okay. Take it down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our version of that thrilling Universal International picture, All American. The saga of college life on the gridiron. Curtain. Music. <laughs> This is the story of a poor boy who, because of, of his talent on the football field, was able to go to college, rise to the top, and become an All-American. My name is Nick. Nick Bonner krasinska Vishalikovsky. In my first year at Mid-State University, I was the star quarterback. I'll never forget that crucial game for the championship. I caught the opening kickoff and ran it back for a touchdown. The crowd went wild. The rooting section stood up and began to cheer for me. Bonner Krasinska, Vichelikovsky, Bonner Krasinska, Vichelikovsky. B O N N A K R A Z I M S K A B. Crowd went wild. 
Now, let's see. Nick Benelli, Nick Benelli. Oh, here's your card. Now, tell me, what is your height? Five foot eleven. Uh, your weight? One seventy-three. Uh, color of your eyes? Oh, they're blue, aren't they? <laughs> Bluer than the toes of a barefooted field goal kicker. all the questions and... Oh, just a second. You're here on a football scholarship, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, in that case, you will be provided with tuition, room, and board, and you'll be given $100 a month to spend. Do I have to spend it? <laughs> No. Thank you. <laughs> now, of course, you and all the other football players will have to earn that money. I understand. What will my job be? Well, in the dean's office, there's an eight-day clock. And I'm supposed to wind it? No, the fullback winds it. Your job is to see that he does. <laughs> Under the burden of this assignment, I began my first year at Sheridan. I'll never forget the day I met our famous football coach. I remember how he walked into the dressing room and said, All right, you men, I want all the linemen to go out and practice tackling. The ends brush up on pass receiving. Halfbacks will put in two hours each bucking the line. The fullbacks will spend the whole day trying to kick field goals. And you, you're playing quarter, aren't you? Yes, sir. What shall I do? Scratch my back. <laughs> this was a thrilling moment for me. At last, I had met that great coach, Itchy Day. <laughs> I stood there, scratching his back. He looked at me and yelled, Do it again! Do it again! Harder! Harder! Do it again! Do it again! Harder! Harder! Now, wait a minute, Coach. I don't want to do this. I'm an All-American at Mid-State. Well, you're at Sheridan now, and everybody starts from scratch. <laughs> and another thing, we observe strict training here. Yes, sir. That means no parties, no dancing, and no dates with girls. And you'll take all your meals at the training table. You have to be in bed by nine, up at six, and we practice seven days a week. But what do we do for fun here at Sheridan? On Tuesday night, you play Scrabble with naughty words. <laughs> yes, Coach Day was a strict disciplinarian. And when it came to football, he was a perfectionist. We had a good team, but the players weren't very bright. So Coach Day had little radios installed in our helmets so we could listen to the broadcast of the game and find out who had the ball. <laughs> One day I tuned in the wrong station and tackled John's other wife. <laughs> After... After starring in three straight games, I was the toast of the campus. But I found out that Sheridan was different than Mid-State. These students were snobs, and my roommate, Robert Carter, was the biggest snob of all. He was always nagging me. Hey, Benelli. What is it, Robert? How many times have I told you? When you store things in the closet, keep your mothballs away from mine. <laughs> but how can you tell the difference? Mine are monograms. <laughs> oh, Robert, why can't we be friends? I don't like riffraff But, Robert, I'm so popular on the campus All the fraternities are begging me to join Well, mine is the ritziest one And I'm sure that you won't get in Why not? Because I'm the only member <laughs> What? And the only reason I got in Is my brother owns a college Later, I found out 
brother also owned Minute Maid orange shoes. The Pittsburgh Pirates and Pittsburgh. But Robert set me straight on one thing. Benelli, you don't fit in here. If you didn't play football, nobody at Sheridan would even talk to you. Oh, yeah? They'd still like me for myself. Well, what makes you think so? I'll tell you why. Because I've got a winning personality. Muscles of steel that the fellows admire and respect. And the kind of youth and good looks that make girls swoon. That door slam wasn't Robert. It was Tony Curtis leaving the studio. <laughs> But I decided to find out if Robert was right. The next day, I turned in my uniform, and overnight, I became the most unpopular person on the campus. A few weeks later at the dance, before the big game, I sat for hours in a corner by myself. Nobody came within five feet of me. I was beginning to think good housekeeping might have been wrong. <laughs> it was then that I saw her. Hello, handsome. She was beautiful, and I had a hunch she was popular, too. She was wearing 164 fraternity pins. No dress, just fraternity. She smiled and came jingling towards me. Before I knew it, we were dancing together. What's your name? Viola Ward. I'm Nick Benelli. I know. Gee, Nick, dancing with you is different than dancing with the other college fellows. It is? Yes. They don't even know the minuet. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Viola, you're beautiful. Will you marry me? I might if you changed your mind and played football again. Oh, so that's it. Well, I wouldn't play football for anything. Not even if I kissed you like this? No. <laughs> like this? No. <laughs> or even like this? decided to play football after the first kiss, but I wasn't foolish enough to tell him. <laughs> the next day, I was sitting alone in my room, and from the stadium, I could hear the cheers of the crowd and the glee club as they sang our school song. You gotta be a football hero to get along with the beautiful girls. In spite of all a million dollars can do, a tackle or two will mean more to you. The fact that you are rich or handsome won't get you anything in curves. You gotta be a football hero to get along with the beautiful girls. You gotta smoke that fine tobacco to really know why a lucky is best. On every college campus throughout the land, the students demand their favorite brand. A lucky strike is better tasting. A lucky strike wins every test. You gotta tear and then compare them to really know why a lucky is best. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Cleaner, fresher. Smoother! Ellis, Ellis, MFT, better tasting, you'll agree. Free and easy on the drop, sure to please your mom and pop. A lucky strike is better tasting, so round and firm and fully packed. A lucky strike is made much better. That's not a claim, no sir, that is a fact. Ask your professor, be happy and go lucky strike. not made of stone, and the school spirit in that song got me. 
I rushed to the stadium and slipped into my good old uniform. The game was well into the fourth period. Sheridan was trailing by one point. And as I ran out into the field, the crowd went wild. B O N N A K. I changed it. I changed it. In the huddle, I called my favorite play, but it was stopped cold. The opposing team had the biggest line in football. His name was Don Wilson. <laughs> Once I ran around his end and was out of bounds by 10 yards. <laughs> Time was running out, but I kept cool. I knew our chance would come. Then with seconds left to play, I intercepted a pass. And as I weaved down the field, suddenly everything went black. I couldn't see a thing. My helmet had slipped down over my eyes. It didn't fit. In other words, it was incongruous. <laughs> I threw off my helmet and cut to the left. I faked to the right. I zigzagged. Suddenly, I thought of viola, and I found myself doing the minuet on the 20-yard line. <laughs> As I started running again, I realized there was only one man between me and the goal line, but I couldn't get by him. Then I noticed he wasn't even wearing a football uniform. And I hollered at him. Why don't you let me get by? I'm still waiting for my tip. <laughs> but I didn't give him the tip. Why should I? After all, it was Tony Curtis, and not I, who was the All-American. <laughs> Friends, forest fires are one of our great national hazards. Today, perhaps this very minute, a forest fire is raging because somebody was careless. Somebody tossed away a lighted cigarette, forgot to put out a campfire, or was careless with matches. Forest fires ravage millions of acres of timberland, weaken America, take lives. So please, be careful, be cautious. Don't give fire a place to start. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here's the voice of the Pulitzer Prize-winning cartoonist, Rube Goldberg. Hi, folks. I've learned that what some people think is funny, others don't think is so hot. It's all a matter of taste, and taste applies to a lot of things, including cigarettes. To me, Lucky's tastes better, and taste is what I'm looking for, and I always find it when I smoke a Lucky. Now, when I buy my Luckies, if you'll pardon this terrible pun, I buy them by the cartoon. Thanks, Rube Goldberg. Friends, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's come by their better taste for two reasons. First, they're made of fine tobacco. The whole world knows LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Then, Lucky's are actually made better to taste better. So be happy, go lucky, buy a carton. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike, lucky strike. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Tony Curtis, who appeared tonight through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures and will soon be seen in his latest picture, Forbidden. Good night, everybody. We're a little late. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsburg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. And now stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows in just a moment. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>